Welcome to World History Channel, where we will be discussing the most dangerous animals in the world. Mostly animals that have put a danger to the human species. Are there more animals that aren't mentioned that you think are dangerous? Leave them in the comment section down below. Number 10. The Pufferfish. Tetrodontidae is a family of primarily marine and estuarine fish of the order Tetrodontiforms. The family includes many familiar species variously called pufferfish, puffers, balloonfish, blowfish, blowies, bubblefish, globefish, swellfish, toadfish, toadies, honey toads, sugar toads, and sea squab. The majority of the pufferfish's species are toxic, and some are among the most poisonous vertebrates in the world. They are typically small to medium in size, although a few species can reach lengths greater than 50 centimeters. They are most diverse in the tropics, relatively uncommon in the temperate zone, and completely absent from cold waters. In certain species, the internal organs, such as the liver, and sometimes the skin, contain tetrodotoxin and are highly toxic to most animals when eaten. Pufferfish can be lethal if not served properly. Puffer poisoning usually results from consumption of incorrectly prepared puffer soup, fugu chiri, or occasionally from raw puffer meat, sashimi fugu. While chiri is much more likely to cause death, sashimi fugu often causes intoxication, lightheadedness, and numbness of the lips. Pufferfish tetrodotoxin deadens the tongue and lips, and induces dizziness and vomiting, followed by numbness and prickling over the body, rapid heart rate, decreased blood pressure, and muscle paralysis. People who live longer than 24 hours typically survive, although possibly after a coma lasting several days. Number 9. The Hippopotamus the hippopotamus, also called the hippo, common hippopotamus or river hippopotamus, is a large, mostly herbivorous, semi-aquatic mammal and ungulate native to sub-Saharan Africa. It is one of only two extant species in the family Hippopotamidae, the other being the pygmy hippopotamus Poiropsis liberiensis or Hexaprotodon liberiensis. After the elephant and rhinoceros, the hippopotamus is the third largest type of land mammal and the heaviest extant artiodactyl, in the traditional, non-cladistic sense of the term, not including cetaceans. Despite their physical resemblance to pigs and other terrestrial even toad ungulates, the closest living relatives of the hippopotamidae are cetaceans, whales, dolphins, porpoises, etc., from which they diverged about 55 million years ago. Hippos are recognizable by their barrel-shaped torsos, wide-opening mouths revealing large canine tusks, nearly hairless bodies, columnar legs and large size. Adults average 1,500 kg 3,310 for males and 1,300 kg 2,870 for females. Despite its stocky shape and short legs, it is capable of running 30 km per hour, 19 miles per hour, over short distances. Although the hippo may look harmless, they are considered to be extremely aggressive and have frequently been reported charging and attacking boats. Small boats can easily be capsized by hippos and passengers can be injured or killed by the animals or drown. In one 2014 case in Niger, a boat was capsized by a hippo and 13 people were killed. As hippos will often engage in raiding nearby crops if the opportunity arises, humans may also come in conflict with them on these occasions, with potential for fatalities on both sides. Number 8. The Elephant Elephants are a select group of proboscideans belonging to the family Elephantidae. They are the largest existing land animals. 
Three living species are currently recognized, the African bush elephant, the African forest elephant, and the Asian elephant. Elephantidae is the only surviving family of proboscideans, extinct members include the mastodons. The family Elephantidae also contains several extinct groups, including the mammoths and straight-tusked elephants. African elephants have larger ears and concave backs, whereas Asian elephants have smaller ears and convex or level backs. Distinctive features of all elephants include a long proboscis called a trunk, tusks, large ear flaps, massive legs, and tough but sensitive skin. The trunk is used for breathing, bringing food and water to the mouth, and grasping objects. Tusks, which are derived from the incisor teeth, serve both as weapons and as tools for moving objects and digging. The large ear flaps assist in maintaining a constant body temperature as well as in communication. The pillar-like legs carry their great weight. Elephants can exhibit bouts of aggressive behavior and engage in destructive actions against humans. In Africa, groups of adolescent elephants damaged homes in villages after cullings in the 1970s and 1980s. Because of the timing, these attacks have been interpreted as vindictive. In parts of India, male elephants regularly enter villages at night, destroying homes and killing people. Elephants killed around 300 people between 2000 and 2004 in Jharkhand while in Assam, 239 people were reportedly killed between 2001 and 2006. Local people have reported their belief that some elephants were drunk during their attacks, although officials dispute the explanation. Purportedly drunk elephants attacked an Indian village a second time in December 2002, killing six people, which led to the killing of about 200 elephants by locals. Number 7. The Crocodile Crocodiles are large semi-aquatic reptiles that live throughout the tropics in Africa, Asia, the Americas and Australia. The term crocodile is sometimes used even more loosely to include all extant members of the order Crocodilia, which includes the alligators and caimans, the gharial and false gharial, and all other living and fossil crocodilomorpha. Although they appear similar, crocodiles, alligators and the gharial belong to separate biological families. The gharial, with its narrow snout, is easier to distinguish, while morphological differences are more difficult to spot in crocodiles and alligators. The most obvious external differences are visible in the head, with crocodiles having narrower and longer heads, with a more V-shaped than a U-shaped snout compared to alligators and caimans. Another obvious trait is that the upper and lower jaws of the crocodiles are the same width, and the teeth in the lower jaw fall along the edge or outside the upper jaw. When the mouth is closed, therefore, all teeth are visible, unlike an alligator, which possesses in the upper jaw small depressions into which the lower teeth fit. Also, when the crocodile's mouth is closed, the large fourth tooth in the lower jaw fits into a constriction in the upper jaw. For hard to distinguish specimens, the protruding tooth is the most reliable feature to define the species family. Crocodiles have more webbing on the toes of the hind feet and can better tolerate salt water due to specialized salt glands for filtering out salt, which are present, but non-functioning, in alligators. Another trait that separates crocodiles from other crocodilians is their much higher levels of aggression. Crocodile attacks on humans are common in places where large crocodiles and native and human populations live. It has been estimated that about 1,000 people are killed by crocodiles each year. The largest species of crocodiles are very dangerous to humans, mainly because of their ability to strike before the person can react. The saltwater crocodile and Nile crocodile are the most dangerous, killing hundreds of people each year in parts of Southeast Asia and Africa. 
the mugger crocodile and American crocodile are also dangerous to humans. Number 6. Tapeworms. Eusostoda, commonly referred to as tapeworms, are the larger of the two subclasses of flatworms in the class of cestode. All tapeworms are endoparasites of vertebrates, living in the digestive tract or related ducts. Examples are the pork tapeworm, with a human definitive host, and pigs is the secondary host, and Moniesia expansa, the definitive hosts of which are ruminants. A tapeworm can lie from a few days to over 20 years. They continue through metamorphosing in different larval stages inside different hosts. The tapeworm is responsible for an infection in the term of cystocercosis. Cystocercosis is a tissue infection caused by a young form of the pork tapeworm. Infection occurs through swallowing or antiperistaltic contractions during regurgitation carrying eggs or gravid proglottids to the stomach. At this point, larvae hatch when exposed to enzymes and penetrate the intestinal wall, traveling through the body through blood vessels to tissues like the brain, the eye, muscles, and the nervous system. At these sites, the parasites lodge and form cysts, a condition called cystocercosis, producing inflammatory reactions and clinical issues when they die, sometimes causing serious or fatal damage. In the eye, the parasites can cause visual loss, and infection of the spine and adjacent leptomeninges can cause paresthesias, pain, or paralysis. Number 5. The Deathstalker Scorpion The Deathstalker, Lyris quinquestriatus, is a species of scorpion, a member of the family Boothidae. It is also known as the Palestine Yellow Scorpion, Omdurman Scorpion, Nakab Desert Scorpion and by many other colloquial names, which generally originate from the commercial captive trade of the animal. To eliminate confusion, especially important with potentially dangerous species, the scientific name is normally used to refer to them. The Deathstalker is one of the most dangerous species of scorpions. Its venom is a powerful mixture of neurotoxins, with a low lethal dose. While a sting from this scorpion is extraordinarily painful, it normally would not kill a healthy adult human. However, young children, the elderly, or infirm, such as those with a heart condition and those who are allergic, are at much greater risk. Any envenomation runs the risk of anaphylaxis, a potentially life-threatening allergic reaction to the venom. A study from Israel shows a high rate of pancreatitis following envenomation. If a sting from Lyris quinquestriatus does prove deadly, the cause of death is usually pulmonary edema. Antivenom for the treatment of deathstalker envenomations is produced by pharmaceutical companies Twyford, German, and Sanofi Pasteur, French, and by the Antivenom and Vaccine Production Center in Riyadh. Envenomation by the deathstalker is considered a medical emergency even with antivenom treatment, as its venom is unusually resistant to treatment and typically requires large doses of antivenom. Number 4. The Lion. The lion is a large felid of the genus Panthera, native to Africa and India. It has a muscular, deep-chested body, short, rounded head, round ears, and a hairy tuft at the end of its tail. It is sexually dimorphic. Adult male lions are larger than females and have a prominent mane. It is a social species, forming groups called prides. A lion's pride consists of a few adult males, related females, and cubs. Groups of female lions usually hunt together, preying mostly on large ungulates. The lion is an apex and keystone predator. Although some lions scavenge when opportunities occur and have been known to hunt humans, the species typically does not. Lions are part of a group of exotic animals that have been central to zoo exhibits since the late 18th century. 
Although many modern zoos are more selective about their exhibits, there are more than 1,000 African and 100 Asiatic lions in zoos and wildlife parks around the world. They are considered an ambassador species, and are kept for tourism, education and conservation purposes. Lions do not usually hunt humans but some, usually males, seem to seek him out. One well-publicized case is the Savo man-eaters. In 1898, 28 officially recorded railway workers building the Kenya-Uganda railway were taken by lions over nine months during the construction of a bridge in Kenya. Lions' proclivity for man-eating has been systematically examined. American and Tanzanian scientists report that man-eating behavior in rural areas of Tanzania increased greatly from 1990 to 2005. At least 563 villages were attacked and many eaten over this period. The incidents occurred near Salus National Park in Rufiji District and in Lindi Province near the Mozambican border. While the expansion of villages into bush country is one concern, the authors argue conservation policy must mitigate the danger because in this case, conservation contributes directly to human deaths. Number 3. Polar Bears The polar bear is a hypercarnivorous bear whose native range lies largely within the Arctic Circle, encompassing the Arctic Ocean, its surrounding seas and surrounding landmasses. It is the largest extant bear species, as well as the largest extant land carnivore. Although it is the sister species of the brown bear, it has evolved to occupy a narrow ecological niche, with many body characteristics adapted for cold temperatures, for moving across snow, ice and open water, and for hunting seals, which make up most of its diet. Although most polar bears are born on land, they spend most of their time on the sea ice. Because of expected habitat loss caused by climate change, the polar bear is classified as a vulnerable species. For decades, large-scale hunting raised international concern for the future of the species, but populations rebounded after controls and quotas began to take effect. Although stereotyped as being voraciously aggressive, they are normally cautious in confrontations, and often choose to escape rather than fight. Satiated polar bears rarely attack humans unless severely provoked. However, due to their lack of prior human interaction, hungry polar bears are extremely unpredictable, fearless towards people and are known to kill and sometimes eat humans. Many attacks by brown bears are the result of surprising the animal, which is not the case with the polar bear. Polar bears are stealth hunters, and the victim is often unaware of the bear's presence until the attack is underway. Whereas brown bears often maul a person and then leave, polar bear attacks are more likely to be predatory and are almost always fatal. However, due to the very small human population around the Arctic, such attacks are rare. Michio Hoshino, a Japanese wildlife photographer, was once pursued briefly by a hungry male polar bear in northern Alaska. According to Hoshino, the bear started running but Hoshino made it to his truck. The bear was able to reach the truck and tore one of the doors off the truck before Hoshino was able to drive off. Number 2. The Box Jellyfish Box jellyfish are cnidarian invertebrates distinguished by their box-like body. Some species of box jellyfish produce potent venom, delivered by contact with their tentacles. Stings from some species, like the Chironex fleckery, Carucchia barnesi, Mallow kingi, and a few others, are extremely painful and often fatal to humans. Although the box jellyfish species unspecified has been called in newspapers the world's most venomous creature and the deadliest creature in the sea, only a few species in the class have been confirmed to be involved in human deaths. Some species are not harmful to humans, possibly delivering a sting that is no more than painful. 
Once a tentacle of the box jellyfish adheres to skin, it pumps nematocysts with venom into the skin, causing the sting and agonizing pain. Flushing with vinegar is used to deactivate undischarged nematocysts to prevent the release of additional venom. A 2014 study reported that vinegar also increased the amount of venom released from already discharged nematocysts. However, this study has been criticized on methodological grounds. Wearing pantyhose, full body lycra suits, dive skins, or wetsuits is an effective protection against box jellyfish stings. The pantyhose were formerly thought to work because of the length of the box jellyfish's stingers, nematocysts, but it is now known to be related to the way the stinger cells work. The stinging cells on a box jellyfish's tentacles are not triggered by touch, but by chemicals found on skin, which are not present on the hose's outer surface, so the jellyfish's nematocysts do not fire. Number 1. The Mosquito Mosquitoes are members of a group of about 3,500 species of small flies within the family Calicidae. Many, if not all, blood-sucking species of mosquitoes are fairly selective feeders that specialize in particular host species. Though they often relax their selectivity when they experience severe competition for food, defensive activity on the part of the hosts, or starvation. Early in the season while mosquito numbers are low, they concentrate on passerine hosts, but as mosquito numbers rise and the birds are forced to defend themselves more vigorously, the mosquitoes become less selective of hosts. Soon the mosquitoes begin attacking mammals more readily, thereby becoming the major vector of the virus, and causing epidemics of the disease, most conspicuously in humans and horses. Mosquitoes can act as vectors for many disease-causing viruses and parasites. Infected mosquitoes carry these organisms from person to person without exhibiting symptoms themselves. Mosquito-borne diseases include viral diseases such as yellow fever and dengue fever. Dengue fever is the most common cause of fever in travelers returning from the Caribbean, Central America, South America, and South Central Asia. This disease is spread through the bites of infected mosquitoes and cannot be spread person to person. Severe dengue can be fatal, but with good treatment, fewer than 1% of patients die from dengue. Dengue viruses are a significant health risk globally. Severe cases of dengue often require hospitalization and can be life-threatening shortly after infection. Symptoms include a high fever, aches and pains, vomiting, and a rash. Warning signs of severe dengue infection include vomiting blood, bleeding from the gums or nose, and stomach tenderness, pain. Thank you very much for watching World History Channel. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share and subscribe. See you in our next videos.